What's up, everybody? Kyle here at Let's Talk Wax, a channel dedicated to baseball card prospecting. So if you're into baseball cards, prospects, and rookies, don't forget to click that subscribe button and help me reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers. Today, we are digging into Predicting Superstars, Episode 5, where I compare the career minor league stats of today's biggest superstars against some of the hottest prospects in minor league baseball. In this video, we'll be taking an in-depth look at Ellie De La Cruz and Christian Encarnacion Strand, two of the top Reds prospects right now, and Marcelo Meyer, one of the top shortstop prospects in the Boston Red Sox organization. So let's dig in and see how these prospects measured up against some of today's top superstars. All right, so you new viewers, I'm going to explain quickly how this works. As I mentioned, I gathered the career minor league stats of several of today's top MLB superstars, and I created an average for each of those statistical categories with all of the players. Now, on the bottom, you can see the averages that I calculated with a 309 batting average, a 146 ISO. 15.5 K percentage, a 1.56 K to walk ratio, an 878 OPS, and a 0.038 stolen base to plate appearance rate. Now, the numbers uh, further to the right are the average age that each of these superstars played at a specific level. And you'll see in each of the cards how I created multipliers to compare each of the three prospects we're going to be looking at today against the average stats of all of the, the big leaguers listed in the blue on the left. First, we're going to take a look at Marcelo Mayer with the Boston Red Sox. He's a shortstop, 19.7 years old, played to high A this year. He was one of the top defensive shortstops coming out of the 2021 draft next to Jordan Lawler, but defensively, he outperformed Lawler significantly. He only made 12 errors in 186 attempts, while Lawler made 28 in just about the same sample size. So Meyer cut his errors in half compared to Lawler. Now, he put up some pretty good numbers this year. He hit 280 with a 209 ISO. He also had 30 doubles, which really helped to jack up his ISO. He had a bit of a high ground ball to fly ball rate in 2022. And I think if he can get that down, we'll see an even larger surge in his ISO in 2023. But he held pretty good K numbers, a K percentage of 25.2, K to walk ratio of 1.57, a sub 900 OPS, and he had 13 home runs and 17 stolen bases. Career-wise, everything's very linear with Mayer. There's no point in me going through all of those because, like I said, they, they are very linear. He's been very consistent with his performance throughout his minor league career. And now you can see down below on the graph that he took his biggest hits in career batting average, career K percentage, and career OPS. S. Now the K percentages the superstars put up, and you can see the superstars averages in the black line and Mayers in the white line. They're so good. Uh, the superstars held a 15.5 K percentage amongst all of them in the minor leagues and a 1.56 K to walk ratio. So it's really difficult to score points in those categories. Now where Mayer scored the most points was in ISO. And you can see this uh, Superstars ISO is only at 146. And that was all the guys that I had on that first slide, their combined ISO throughout their minor league career. And that's rather low, but they were also playing at higher levels at young ages and power is usually the last thing to come. But Mayer scored 54 points in that category as he posted a two uh, 200 ISO. So he did pretty well. His final score came out to a negative 2.4. And I think he's going to have a pretty big year in double A next year. I would really assume that the Red Sox are going to assign him to double A. Defensively, he's ready. Offensively, he may struggle a little bit, but I'm excited to see what he can do next year. And I forgot to mention before we go any further that negative scores are very common in this series. Positive scores are very rare, and Christian Strand scored positive because he absolutely mashed in 2022. He's been a really, a really consistent bat throughout his minor league career. He's posted two consecutive seasons where he hit over 300 with a 200-plus ISO, and that's just extremely rare to find players who can do that while putting up pretty decent K numbers. So when he finished the season, he was 22.7. He played through double A. He was traded to the Cincinnati Reds. He's a third baseman, may become a first baseman down the road or left fielder. Not really sure how the Reds are going to get his bat in the lineup, but he is bat first all the way. So in 2022, he hit 304 with a 284 ISO, 
25.4K percentage, a 3.45K to walk ratio, which is a little high for me. His K numbers are iffy, but for the power numbers that he put up, he hit 32 home runs. For 32 home runs, those are really good K numbers. You don't see many guys with 30 plus home runs that have the K numbers that Christian Strand had. He posted a 955 OPS, which is absolutely insane. He gained 87 points in that category. Now, like I said with Mayer, uh, Christian Strand's stats were pretty linear throughout his career. And consistency is another thing that I look for when I'm prospecting. You know, if a guy has a big year and it's his first big year in his minor league career, I'm a little hesitant to jump in on those guys. But if they've put up consistent and quality numbers throughout the minor leagues, those are usually safer bets for success in the higher levels and in the MLB. Now, the only two or three spots Encarnacion Strand took hits were obviously the K percentage and the K to walk ratio because they were a bit inflated and the superstars are just so good at that. And um, he took a hit for his age, you know, being a college draftee out of Oklahoma State. He's 22.7, only playing in his second year of professional baseball, but he took a pretty big ding in that category as well. He gained an average. He gained Huge numbers in ISO. He had a one, uh, it's got 137 points for his ISO, which is really, really good. And um, his final score panned out to be a 2.7, which is very good. That's a good score. Like I said, a lot of negative numbers pop up on this series, and Strand bumped into the positive, which is very good for this series. Now, before we take a look at Ellie De La Cruz and how he fared against today's top superstars, I want to ask you guys to check out my Patreon page. If you enjoy my content and videos and you want to find some extra exclusive content or you just want to support the channel, head over to my Patreon page. I'll put a link in the video description. You can find Bowman autograph checklist breakdowns for all releases from 2019 to the present, a top 100 Bowman Chrome autos list, a top 100 Bowman Chrome autos under $50 list, which is huge for finding sleepers. You get early access to all my video info, a monthly price tracker that tracks the prices of prospects, young rookies and stars, sealed wax, and some vintage cards over the course of several months. And you got a private Discord server and free monthly giveaways. Like I said, if you want to support the channel, links in the video description. We're going to wrap this thing up with Ellie De La Cruz, probably the top chase out of 2022 Bowman next to Jackson Chirillo. And when 2022 Bowman Chrome releases, he will be the top chase because everybody will be chasing Chirillo in 2022 Bowman Chrome. But just a freak. He's an absolute freak. And I got worked up about Ellie's K numbers early in uh, the season in 2022. I thought to myself, there's no way he's going to continue to put up these numbers with the K percentages and his K to walk rate that, he's, that he had in the early year, but he did. So I'm really starting to get less concerned about his K numbers and just focusing on how good he is and how many tools this young player has. So he was 20.6 in double A to finish the year. He's with the Cincinnati Reds like in Encarnacion Strand. He hit 304 with a 282 ISO. Like I said, the K numbers are bad. 30.7 K percentage, 3.95 K to walk ratio. But he had a plus 900 OPS and he hit 28 home runs and stole 47 bases between high A and double A as a 20.6 year old. Playing shortstop. The Reds have kept him at shortstop. He hasn't moved off of that position. I also thought he may be a candidate to kind of move to third base, but they haven't shown that yet in the organization. Now, um, like I said, his production is really, really good. But when you compare him to today's superstars, there's a huge gap between the K percentage and the K to walk ratio. And as I mentioned before, Almost all prospects, unless you're Stephen Kwan or a guy like Xavier Edwards, you're going to lose points in the K, per, uh, the K numbers. And he took a pretty significant ding there. He only lost 11 points in um, career batting average, and he only lost four points in age per level. And that just shows you how young the superstars were when they played at AA. They were, uh, their average came to 20.5, which is really exceptional. 
So he took a big hit in uh, ISO at 237, and uh, OPS and stolen base play appearances, he gained some points in those categories as well. So he comes out to a negative 2.3 for his final score, mainly because his K numbers are so distant from the superstars. So I was very surprised with these results when I plugged these three guys into the Let's Talk Wax Predicting Superstars formula. Christian Encarnacion Strand came out on top with a 2.5. Ellie De La Cruz comes in second with a negative 2.3. And Marcella Meyer comes in at third place with a negative 2.4. Now, one thing you have to consider before we get into the list of the top 10 all time, there's no defensive aspects plugged into this formula. It is strictly offensive. And if I had to say the best defender out of these three, it would easily be Marcelo Meyer, who is probably one of the top shortstop defenders in minor league baseball. But just keep that in mind. This is subject to offensive statistics only. So here is our all-time predicting superstars top 10. And this is what makes the series really fun. I record the date that each of these players scored uh, their score because we can actually run them several times. Some guys, you know, go up and down and the career stats change depending on where they at, they're at in uh, their career. So the scores are always changing, but I recorded the top 10 scores of all time with a date. Uh, first place is Kyle Manzardo. And like I said, this has no bearing on defense. Manzardo is probably a first baseman or DH at best, but he absolutely mashed this year. Corbin Carroll is at second place. He scored a 22.5 on August 6th. Jordan Lawler has the third highest score. He scored a 14.1 July 14th. Aviel Amador is actually number four. I have him wrong on this card with a score of 3.4. And Anthony Volpe is in fifth place with a score of 3.1. So switch those two on the card. And we come to our first place out of this video. Christian Encarnacion Strand takes the sixth place rank out of 10 with a 2.7. And you can see Ellie and Marcelo both qualified for the all-time top 10 with a negative score. And I mentioned before, negative scores aren't necessarily bad. As I mentioned before, if you guys enjoy my content, don't forget to check out my Patreon page. Lots of cool, exclusive stuff over there. And you can support the channel if that's what you want to do. Links in the video description. I'm also always running free giveaways on my social media outlets, Facebook groups, Twitter, and Instagram at Let's Talk Wax. I want to thank Break Grading for supporting this free giveaway. I'm giving away a 2020 Bowman Chrome Refractor Francisco Alvarez BRG9 and a Julio Rodriguez 2020 Draft Refractor BRG9. So head over to my social media outlets and check those free giveaways out. Quick shout out to all my level three Patreon sponsors, Tom Barta, Max, Brad, Gary D. Childers Jr., Just Stingers Breaks, 909 Sports Cards, Greg Graham, JP Navarro, Kenny Winkles, Larry Canterbury, Max Antony, Jason Hall, Bobby Lynch, Bruce Wiley, Graham Cochran, Mike Barrier, and Numbered Cards. I really appreciate all of yous, all my supporters over on Patreon. If you guys enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel and help me reach my new goal of 10,000 subscribers. Y'all have a great day.